Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman Wright. In the last video, I talked about louvers and how they're basically the first thing the air sees in the HVAC system. I also mentioned combination louvers, which are louvers and damper combinations. So the damper is probably the next thing the air is going to see, so it makes sense to talk about that today. So let's talk about dampers. <music> A damper is a valve that controls the amount of airflow in the HVAC system or its components. You can have dampers in ductwork or as part of a component like an air handler, VAV box, or even a diffuser. They are a basic and important part of the HVAC system. There are a lot of types of dampers. There are control dampers, balancing damper, backdraft dampers, pressure relief dampers, life safety dampers, and industrial dampers. Control dampers control the airflow in the HVAC system. These can be standalone in the system or they can be a component of another piece of equipment. Balancing dampers balance the airflow in the HVAC system. Balancing is essentially the process of adjusting the air to deliver the correct amount of airflow into each zone in the system. Backdraft dampers allow airflow in only one direction to prevent backdrafts. Pressure relief dampers are backdraft dampers that have a start open pressure so that if the pressure exceeds that predetermined point, the damper will open and allow the pressure to be relieved. Life safety dampers are put in openings in walls and ceilings and floors to prevent the spread of smoke and fire. They operate automatically when they detect smoke or fire. In the case of smoke, they are designed to close quickly to restrict the spread of smoke in an HVAC system, but less often they can be designed to open to control the movement of smoke within a building. Industrial dampers are heavy duty dampers that are used in severe conditions. Industrial dampers can be used in applications like tunnels or blast situations. Okay, so let's move this all out of the way and draw a damper. So we'll start with the frame of the damper and draw in some blades. So label the frame, and over here you have the linkage that links the blades together so that a single operator can move all the blades at once. There's a jam seal to prevent leakage between the frame and the blades, and a blade seal to seal the blades when they're fully closed. Dampers can be made out of aluminum or steel, and they can be manual where a person sets the damper position and locks into place. A balancing damper is a good example of this or dampers can be automatically controlled by an actuator that's receiving a signal from a controller based on inputs such as pressure or temperature. Let's move this out of the way. Dampers can be a posed blade or parallel blade design. A posed blade dampers, also known as OBDs, have blades that open and close in opposition to each other like this. The benefit to this is that the airflow leaves the damper in pretty much a straight and uniform distribution. So if you need uniform airflow, like maybe over an electric heater, OBDs are a good choice. OBDs can also be a little quieter in partial open situations. Parallel blades work in parallel like this. You can see that as the damper closes, the airflow will be directed towards the direction of the damper blades. Parallel blades typically require more torque to open, but less to close compared to OBDs. The relationship between flow rate and position of the blades is not linear, meaning that 25% open may not be 25% flow, or that opening another 5% will give you 5% more flow. OBDs not only have more uniform airflow and a little quieter, they also have more linear characteristics from the open to close position, so they're good through a broader operating range. Parallel blade dampers have a steeper relationship, so the more they open, the flow increases more rapidly. That said, most controllers and sensors are measuring and controlling the airflow, not damper position open, so they can compensate for that. In VAV boxes, you'll also see single blade dampers. That is a single blade that rotates around the center like this. And in diffusers, you may also see butterfly dampers that are made up of small rotating blades that kind of look like this. These types of blades tend to be simple and flat in profile. 
There are also V-groove blades that look like this. These are good for velocities less than 1,500 feet per minute and where noise is not a factor in the application. If your application is going to see higher velocities or is sound sensitive, you can get dampers with an airfoil blade. Airfoil blades look like this. These blades can have velocities over 2,000 feet per minute and are often used when noise is a concern. Airfoil blades have the lowest pressure drop and are typically stronger than other shapes. The linkage connects the blades together. They are usually at the end of the blade and are driven by a single drive blade. If you mount your actuator here, it would be direct drive. A single actuator may power multiple sections of a damper or there may be one actuator per section. You can also get internally mounted actuators. Dampers can also be fitted with optional devices such as pressure sensors, smoke detectors, and position indicators. So that's an overview of dampers. We'll go into more details on the different types of dampers in their application in future videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.